How are we doing, everybody? Welcome back to Crime Theory with myself, Ron Swanson, and of course, the fountain of knowledge that is John Wedger on the Sean Atwood channel. Thank you very much for being here. Please, before we get started, can you make sure that you're subscribed with the bells on? We've just hit 800,000 subscribers here on the channel, and it's a very nice feeling. John, how has your week been? It's been brilliant. It's um, interesting times. Uh, of course, the... Uh, the media is filled up with the Russell Brand uh, goings on, and and I think that's um, very revealing as to who you can and cannot upset. So uh, I think you need to I think you're right. Draw a big, oh, I think people need to draw a huge inference um, over over that this saga. Yeah. This is uh, I think it's a veiled threat to many people. What's going on? Well, do you, very, do you not think it echoes the Andrew Tate scenario? Oh, oh, all through it. I um, I think what it is, you know, uh, th these people have made a lot of money through their lifestyle and everything else, and sometimes they're not wholesome. But uh, again, uh, with Tate, you know, what what Ill illegalities really? I know that he is under investigation for stuff, but prior to that, what what was going on? I, I can't really see it. But and with Russell Brand, I mean, when you watch that program. And being a detective, if that was put before me and they said, go and nick him, I'd say, on what? Yeah, well, that's, that's been my point. And do you know the sad thing, uh, John, right? Is let's say for a second that out of the four women, we've got three crazy bitches, right? And one actual victim, yeah. right? No one's going to give a f about that victim if it turns out that uh, th th there's, there's one of them that's found out to have a, a hole in their story. They're all going to be defined as holes in their story. So the sad part is, is the weaponization of trauma and the use of trauma by multi-medias and multi-conglomerates to their and, benefit. Well, 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 and also, you know, they're trashing evidence. It's all about what I call a first account and a free-flowing narrative, and it's got to be untainted. This evidence is now massively tainted, and Channel 4 have ruined it for any possibility of a future prosecution, I and mean, I'm telling you now, every single girl that was interviewed in there, right, why they never went to the police, I don't know, because they are the agency to prosecute, not Channel 4. Um, but even still, if it goes to the police now, their evidence cannot be used. It's been trashed. It's been ruined. Well, and it reminds me It reminds me of that um, Channel 4 episode where, um, uh, no, Channel 4, that uh, Only Falls and Horses episode where Del Boy falls down the, um, uh, his uncle falls down the, the basement. And he says that, that Uncle Albert's fallen down the cellar. And, he's, and instead of calling Ambrose, he said, quick, call a, call a solicitor. Right, and he yeah. just reminded me of that, quick, call a solicitor. And same with them, quick, call, call a lawyer. Well, why well, not call the police? What, it's weird. What, what about if the witnesses worked for Channel 4 and Channel 4 said to them, well, rather than going to the police, why didn't we do this? Do you think that could Well, be that's right. And, and, I, and I think um, any... Uh, representing lawyer or brand because i w he's done the best thing keep the gob shut now's not the time to do retaliation videos which tate did a lot of i mean tate oh, quite listen, yeah, we're, not, we're not we're not we're not going to talk about how tate never helped himself at any point in this but, yeah i know i know i know uh but um but that's tate uh, brand, that's tate though brand's it? done Brand's done the right thing. He's he's kept his mouth. I'm not a fan of Brand. I'm not. I'm really not. And and I'd be horrified if my daughter went anywhere near that guy if I had one. But um, I think what they're doing it, it it's just a massive massive witch hunt. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, and I think Channel I think, Four um, need to be boycotted really I think after it's, what they've done. I think it's a very interesting case to watch yeah. unfold for a multitude of reasons and listen that's not why we're here if you want more on that and you'll be listening to this after we've filmed this but of course i've got at least two live streams up on the russell brand the russell the russell brand situation where i kind of look at it from both sides of the case rather than just assuming and going off on hysteria um so yeah well listen john putting russell to one side what yep. what horrendous back oh. alley of doom are you taking us down this evening well i mean Look, I, I generally feel that we're being guided. The two of us have been guided yes. on this. We started off on this random um, journey in talking about murderers. Yep. And then it sort of went to the child murderers. Yep. And then it, it sort of then started inferring that this wasn't just a single individual who's a bit weird. Yeah. Who takes it on, on a spontaneous mission to abduct a lone child that yeah. happens to come his way, kill them, and then that's it. It's... No, we, w what we're seeing 
I'm telling you now, we're onto something big, and this we this are. just gets bigger and bigger. After the um the Leslie Mulsey thing, um, I was called by a survivor of not just um sexual incestuous abuse, but also spiritual abuse, which went on in the um Yorkshire Moors. Um, I'll, I'll give it a name of it when it comes to me in a minute. Uh, and her father uh, is Peter. Uh, a, an active Satanist, and he was in with um, uh, what's his name? Who's the guy? Um, Gastry, is it Gastry? I can't remember. Uh, but the, the gist of what John's saying yeah. is, after we done our, we we never we we just literally met uh, ten weeks ago and went want to do a bit of a podcast. Yeah, no bother. And literally, John was like, you know, I'll fit it into the days I'm working anyway. It's not an inconvenience. Let's go. And it, it's when John says guided, we've not. And I, I genuinely believe that at no point John has sat down and went, right, we're going to do this one this week, and then in four weeks we're going to do this one. We're picking no, cases. We we, he's picking cases, and he's he's having a good time doing his research and whatnot. And it's odd that we both seem to have these eureka moments where it's like, well, that, how come these two are connected? And it all it, it's it's drawing a, a map that is basically showcasing a very very dark hidden world involving psychopaths who recruit and psychopaths who dispose of children and it's almost like how could when people say oh well that's that's a bit far-fetched do you take your own rubbish to the rubbish dump no you have a man or a woman who comes and collects it in a world of horrific child abuse there is binmen for the children Okay, and I know that's, I'm being very blunt, but a lot of the time, the people that are arrested, the people that are part of these huge investigations are tiny little cogs in a massive machine. Well, well, well I think we've got to look at similarities. This isn't lone individuals. These are people that, it, for some reason, it is their job to abduct a kid. The kid is usually known in the area, always seen out running errands or, yeah. or, or on their own or coming from a dysfunctional family. These, these guys that do it, Sometimes women are people that are connected to other paedophiles. There is always massive police cover-ups, yeah. malfeasance in public office. And like we saw in the last yeah. one, a stitch-up of, of an innocent stroke retired individual. It, but it's not the we first time. We are going to go to a place now where I'm telling you now, the similarities, bang, bang. Uh, and uh, if you've watched the last two episodes of this you can almost yeah. predict where we're going with and, this. And I'm telling you, it's this not, is, and, and I'm going to leave the best till the end with all this. It's it's not even, oh, these two are obsessed with this. They're, they're seeing links that aren't there. We could take away all the kids, all the murders, all the big headlines, and just focus on the way police are handling these cases. Take away all the stuff that's true crime and interesting and go real, like, clerical on paperwork, people that are assigned to the cases, the handling of it, the judges, the changing of judges at the last minutes, and the promotions for those who seem to be overly incompetent. The only answer left is a larger plan that is being rolled well, out and woven. Uh, there's, there's a thing called method indexing, and the police okay. have used it for many, many years. And it's really uh, an index of MOs, modus operandi. And again, it's basic profiling. Okay. And, and people are very much into profiling now. And what's happened with this, we've actually gone into the world of profiling. And it's not hard to see that you can stop predicting patterns Dude. and we, we've seen this <sighs> when, when we did um you know the guy with the, down in birmingham with the kids that went missing um his name will come to me i'll keep forgetting these names yeah don't worry um we, we we saw it again with the west um with this gastry and raymond hewlett with with the uh leslie Molseed. uh but we're just seeing the same the same pattern the same pattern the same pattern yep. the same pattern and, and inadvertently, we started linking these in, and it's not us that's linking them in, it's criminal fact that's yep. linked to all this yep. in. thank you. That is the key that you have to... John and I aren't going to waste our time on some tinfoil hat stuff. I'll be honest with you, I don't have time. John certainly doesn't have time. But as the, the evidence is growing, we are developing visual tools, a mind map, if you will, that will help you understand all of this, because it is complicated by design, it's difficult to uncover, by design and things are hidden by design and 
I'm not being funny, people, but when you were doing a show and one of the co-hosts is literally a ex-policeman who worked the job, seen it all firsthand, and has had his life put in danger because of what he's seen and said, I think we can we can kind of take what John says as, you know, fact. I don't John to me. I'm at that stage with John now that I would be very fucking shocked if I double checked anything and it didn't come back. I, I mean, serious stuff. Maybe some dates be wrong or whatever. But I'm seeing. I'm meaning, I John's not the sort of person to be here for clicks and to to sensationalize. We well, are. Well, I, I, I worked in an environment where we would get information and intelligence. Okay, well, what is it? Well, let's look at it. And then you piece it up and you realize these patterns are starting emerging. You start taking statements and then you have to go b before th the most thorough legal system in the world and, and a burden of proof, which is beyond all reasonable doubt with, with people that are some of the best and sharpest legal minds, barristers, which are trained in advocacy. And some of them were QCs, were silks. You know, they were the, the cream of the crop of their game. Yeah. And me as an investigator, right, and, and the one that would, the OIC, the officer in the case, would have to pit my ability, my wits and my intelligence against these people. And, yeah. and I'm telling you now, I would, on many occasions, I would win. So I know that, that we can't just make these allegations. Intelligence is good. Yeah. It needs to be backed up with evidence. And then we start going for it and we know that it's all open to criticism interrogation interpretation i know that more than anyone else so um this isn't uh a load of nonsense that's just backed up on yeah. conspiracy and speculation it really isn't all right well listen where are we going tonight john what is the case right. and right. Uh, where we're, are we headed we're, we're, we're going north of the border we're going into scotland we're going to a case which, which is like a lot of these. Anyone who's into like the true crime will know these cases. Um, the Leslie Mole was probably the least known one, uh, but when you look into it, you realise that, that that it has had um, a lot of interest in the past. But we, we, we're going uh, only a few years before Leslie Mole Okay. We're going to the very late fifties. We're going into nineteen fifty-seven uh, to Lanarkshire to a town called Coatbridge which is just a few miles to the east of Glasgow. Uh, this is the 23rd of February. It's winter. And there's an 11-year-old girl called Moira Anderson. Moira Anderson, very well known, very smiley, very chirpy. And we're going to look now. Look at Leslie Molseed, very well known in her area, likeable little girl. Leslie goes off for an errand, never seen again. Moira, on the 23rd of February, is sent on an errand to the shop at the end of the road to buy some butter. Exactly the same, almost identical scenario yep, as Leslie Moldseed. Yep. And never, ever seen again. Okay. Right? So, she goes off to the shops. She doesn't return. Okay? Now, the police in the town of Coatbridge, they came up with a theory that Leslie, uh, sorry, Moira, has probably jumped on a bus, gone into Glasgow and got a train to go to London. No connections to London. It's the middle of the winter. She's freezing cold. She's only got a few pennies in her pocket. Jesus. And uh, that, that, that is their theory. Now, this is really strange because there was um, uh, in Belgium, at the same time as Dutro, uh two children went missing um, to a, a boy and his, uh, his sister. And the police came out with exactly the same theory. These kids were missing. They were, in effect, they were murdered by people in the ring. And the police said they were probably just mischievous going out middle of winter. And they'll probably be all right because they'll find food. They can go into a field and eat potatoes. And that was experienced detectives. That was their, their theory of what was happening to these two little kids in, so, winter, I mean, obviously, in the middle of night in Belgium. Obviously, what we're seeing here then, if we've got the same thing happening in one country with already connections to this story, it, this is yeah. obviously their go-to. Now, we're talking about a time where information travelled a lot slower. And I believe that in the golden era of crime, which is pre-CCTV, pre-DNA, all this kind of stuff, that turning around to a parent and saying, ah, oh, I should probably just jump on a train to London, mate. That news, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, the and, audacity and, of that isn't going to spread as quickly. 
And the other thing we've got to look at, we're back in the time when we had communities. Yep. Right, we wasn't as mixed and as diverse as we are now. Of Everyone course. knew each other. So people didn't, you know, like immigrants would might not integrate. Everyone back there integrated. There was a thing called curtain twitchers. There was busybody women, you know, and there was a lot of um, women that, that yeah, were yeah. housewives and would stay at home. And people retired early on their pensions. So they knew what went on and communities were close. So if things did go on in the community, and they were risque, they would stay in that community. And that included the police. So so Moira, who was very well known, went missing, never seen again. Um, and the police, they come up with this theory. Um, her family, they weren't happy with it. And that someone had then come forward and said, there was a girl that looked like Moira, had jumped onto a bus. There was a bus company called Baxter's that, that did the bus routes in the area. And... Um, they decided to look into that and they went and interviewed a few of the drivers. And one of the drivers they interviewed was a bloke called Alex, uh, Gart, Gart, Gartsrop, as a okay. strange name, Alex okay. Gartsrop. And, um, Alex, uh, was a local bus driver. He, he, he was quite a handsome guy, quite tall with dark hair, massive, massive womanizer. It turned out that this guy, um, had, a sexual interest in young girls. He was also involved with other people of the same ilk. He was a huge womanizer. He would beat his um, wife, cheat on her constantly, and beat his children. Now, we saw that with, with, with Gastry, the, the guy um, with Leslie Molseed. Very, very similar. Um, this Alex also had a horrendously high sexual appetite, uh, and he basically shag anything that moved. You know, so uh, he, in my opinion, would have been number one suspect. But the police interviewed him. He said he didn't know what they were on about. And they, they left it at that. They, they they weren't really bothered. Right. So the police then didn't, decided not to, the Cobridge CID decided not to pursue that. So instead, they go and pick up a guy called Ian Simpson. And Ian Simpson is a local guy. Oh wait, 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 wait! Uh, wait. Let me tell. Let me let me see if I can guess this right. Is he a local guy who has mental health issues? Yes. Oh, well, I, that you're just making this up now, John. No, this no, is no. you're writing this it, as every time. I'm telling you. No, Ian Simpson is retired. Right, he comes up with an alibi because he's got a hobby and he's in the territorial army. So he's clever enough to get in the army, yeah. as was our man Ishko had a job, but he was backwards. Yeah, he okay. remained he remained the number one suspect until bear in mind this is nineteen fifty seven until twenty twelve. You know, I'm be I'm beginning to think that the areas this occurs in have nothing to do with the kids. Yeah. Obviously areas are gonna have kids. They're profiling areas with these individuals with the mental health. The kids will come from the area, but they don't need to scope out the area. They're scoping these areas for these these men, these these patsies. It's unbelievable. They anyway, so he gets brought in, and the military say, "Well, he was he was with us that day," um, but they still kept him until 2012 as their main suspect. Right? However, Alex Garthorpe, right, was on bail for the of a 13 year old girl. Right? He later goes to prison for two years for the. Okay. And dignitaries in the community all come to his aid saying what a nice guy he is. And they decide uh, to, at the court case, all the um, uh, p people in high prominence in, in, the, in the town. Wait, wait, wait uh, let me when... see if I can guess. Let me see if I can guess. So after he was sentenced, people of high promise in the town petitioned to try and overturn or shorten his sentence. Well, well, they, 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 not as much as that, they, they came as character witnesses saying what a good fellow was and blamed the girl for being a 13 year old girl for, for being promiscuous. They victim blamed. Of course, of course, of course, it's the, the, of course, it's the, the girl's fault, John. Yeah. Of course. You can't, you know, you can't walk 10 feet these days without a promiscuous 13 year old. Wild, yeah. mate. Wild. Right, right. Right. Anyway, it gets better. So if we go back to Detroit. Mark Dutro's mother contacted the police and said, these girls have gone missing. I think my son's got something to do with them. He's got two girls kept in a cage and was ignored. Alex's father went to the police and said, I think my son's done this. 
And he then turns up with um, crowbars and assorted sort of tools and wrecks his son's house, rips off all the kitchen units and everything, looking for the girl's body. Because he is convinced that Alex has abducted this girl, right? And tells the police that nothing is done about it. Absolutely nothing is done. Um, Jesus. Uh, so, and th- there's also the Baxter's Coach Company. There's a group of the guys there that would hold orgies on the buses when no one was about. They get some of these were young girls. And was uh, that was also, that drivers? Was that drivers of the right, buses? Right, or was that drivers, okay. conductors, and also um, anyway. So, Damn, bus um, Alex has has um, some children. You know, he's got a daughter and, and two boys. The girl is named called Sandra Brown. She's eight years old at the time, right? She later goes on to sort of make a big deal, comes a big noise in in suggesting her father killed Moira. They live in a house, right? Um, And opposite the house is Coatbridge Masonic Lodge. And she goes on later on, Sandra, to say that the CID officers from Coatbridge and my father would all go into this building together. They were all in the same Masonic Lodge together, all of them. Okay. Right? Damn. The investigating officer, men, workers from Baxter's Coach Company, the lot. Okay? All going in there together. So we've got a free Masonic link, right? Um, in addition, uh, Alex goes on to sexually assault and abuse five out of the six of his nieces. Oh, Jesus Christ. He, he is instigated, he is brought in and interviewed over the ensuing years by 122 uh, sexual assaults and rape children. Uh, uh, yeah, no whoa, whoa, whoa. is he whoa, ever, whoa. ever uh, put uh, down uh, as a suspect. In- interviewed 100 times about the same shit or 100 different cases. 122 different cases. Wow. Yeah. He was caught with teenage girls in his car. Whoa. Um, 122. Uh, um, he was given his job back on release of prison for rape of a 13-year-old. It's, the company gave him back where he had access to, to um, young girls, school girls. All right. Oh, wow. He then leaves. He then leaves the area. And guess where he goes? He goes to the town of Leeds. Now, who lives in Leeds at this time? A ripper? No. Uh, uh, the ripper, yeah. And the one, James Lucifer Savile. Oh, of course. Right. Any, anyway, let's just leave that on the back burner all right, because all right, all right. that is only a geographical link, and it could be coincidental. We don't. Yeah, we don't one geographical right. yeah. link, sure, but when you see the data, and it's it, it's going to be a bit stomach churning for right. everyone. Carry right. on, carry so, on, though, John. Carry on. So, so what happens is that um, a bit later on, Alex is one of his co-workers uh, at the bus company is a bloke called James Kelligley, right? And James Kelligley is arrested um, and jailed for child rape. He is also the local preacher. So he runs a church, the local church. He's also a lorry driver. Again, we're getting this transient moving about, all right? And him and Kelligley and Alex worked at the same time on the buses, and it turns out that the, the 13 year old girl that, that Alex. Here is a word from today's sponsor, Aura. If you Google someone, you can find out all kinds of personal information about them. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers. You can use my link, https. Dot dot forward slash forward slash aura.com aura is a-u-r-a forward slash sean atwood s-h-a-u-n-a-t-t wood to try two weeks for free and see how many data brokers are sharing your info also linked in my description box on this youtube version or scan the qr code on the screen Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web and gives you the recommendations on what to do. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. Gallagly had brought to Alex, it was his sister. It was Gallagly's sister, okay? 
Right. So we'll keep that on the back burner for a minute. All right. Okay. So we've, we've got um, all the time and, and, and time goes on and Sandra grows up and she's, she's convinced that her father is involved in the murder of, um, of this uh, young girl. Anyway, he goes to Leeds um, and he sets up a new life there. But Sandra doesn't give up. So she, she makes many, many, many uh, approaches to the police and they just bob her off. And they still say that this guy is the uh, number one suspect. All right. Eventually, uh, in the late 90s, uh, the, the case gets handed over to, to Strathclyde Police. The Glaswegians take it. And uh, they look at the case and they um, appoint a detective inspector called inspector called Jim McEwen. Now, Jim McEwen uh, looks at it and he thinks, all right, there's something in this. There's something in this. Um, for the first time, officially, um, they admit to using a psychic detective and, and a, a guy sort of comes forward and says, like, I want to help. And he goes out and he said, look, there's a bus involved in this. Okay. There's a little girl um, and she's in this area and takes them to this secluded area where there's a lot of ponds and lakes and things like that and goes this girl's in here and it's a bus driver and she was murdered and there's more to this right but it's still not enough okay so um this um this di starts reinvestigating it he reinvestigates it um he then numerous numerous victims come forward he takes statements and he puts a file together and this file was massive and it's got enough for him to be for Alex to be brought in for murder many many years later and also many many sexual assaults and attempted rapes on young girls now they're important that important these ancillary offenses because they're what we call holding charges okay. so a big major case is going to take a lot of investigating a lot of work but you'll also stick on an ancillary charge which will which will give it at the very least bail conditions Okay. And at the most, it, it, it will cause the person to be remanded, right? So they're very important. So um, May the 18th, um, 1993, Alex is arrested on suspicion of murder and many, many sexual assaults and attempted rapes on, on numerous girls, and he's charged, Okay. right? Uh, he gets put before the court. The court grant him immediate bail. Uh, the matter is then uh, put back before the CPS. And the CPS drop all sexual, all holding charges get dropped. All of them. Yeah. And they put so many conditions on the reinvestigating um, of uh, the murder yeah. that it makes it um, unpracticable to continue investigating it for murder. Right. And then the CPS officially um, in 1993 make a statement which is contrary to, to, to law anyway. Yeah. Um, and there's been many proven cases of this. And they said, that nobody, no murder. Now, we there's been many, many cases that go back many years that show that you don't necessarily need a body for murder, although it, it's hugely important, but there have been many cases where that, that's gone ahead. Um, he Alex also incriminates himself um, in, in, in the interview with, with, with some quite alarming comments, uh, which I haven't got them at hand, so that they, the police were very, very confident that they had this guy. Um, so, um, Sandra, uh, Alex's daughter then decides to, uh, covertly approach her father, um, and visit him in Leeds. And she takes what she says is a friend, but it turns out to be a journalist and they, they covertly record it. And during this meeting, Alex then admits that he did pick up Moira Anderson on the bus that night. He'd never done that before. He actually does admit to it. Uh, he doesn't say that he murdered her. He said she just got off the bus. But then he said he had to split his shift and go home for a few hours. She said he never did that. He did his shift. He had his break and then he come home, you know. Um, so he changes his story. He also then goes on to admit to um, abusing quite a few young girls, which he'd never done before. Okay. So they've, they've, got, they've got all this um, compelling evidence that he, he then, which is very uh, telling, a narcissistic trait. He then rants on that he's the victim and that they're always making up allegations against him. And it turns out that they find out that he has been a suspect in 122 separate child abuse cases. I mean, that, I mean, has, to, that has to speak for itself. 
I mean, of course surely, surely. I mean, a hundred and twenty and different cases. How would you different cases? How though? Yeah. How? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's incredible. But so and then this is where um uh that they, they get the uh, Masonic connection because he sort of then admits that he was in the Masons and, and Sandra remembers him going into this building, which he then found out was a Masonic building and with the police officers going in there. Yeah. Um, so Sandra decides to write a book okay. and it's called where there is evil. And it comes from the biblical saying where there is evil, it must be cast out. And since she wrote the book about uh, Moira's disappearance, many, many girls came forward. They were sort of inundated with information which was sent on then to this D.I. McEwen, who was never really officially put back on the case, but he sort of carried on. Um, one one person, a farmer, turns around in the same location as a psychic detective brought forward and said, oh, I remember seeing a Baxter's bus park there okay. with men in it. And uh, and then I saw a, a driver carrying, you know, a, a girl out into the fields, which is exactly what the, the psychic detective said, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but the so the police, the original senior investigating officer, the SIO, yeah. was then approached by the investigation team and said, "Look, this is what we've got. We you know we want to reopen this again for the second time." And he still maintained that that Alex was a good citizen and that the retired Ian Simpson will will always be the suspect because we saw that with with Colin Stagg. Yeah. That the investigators we will never it's look for par- anyone else. We saw that with crazy. Barry George. You know, and of course we see this with Stefan Kishko in the in the uh uh Leslie Molsey thing. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. Uh, they still maintain that um Moira is a runaway and is probably old now, but she ran off to London at the age of eleven. They still maintained it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> the, and they all, they then found out when they looked at the paperwork, that when, when the girl went missing, that Alex was on bail for raping a young girl. Um, and at no point did they put out a public appeal. It wasn't for the next three months before they actually asked the public for any help in this case, That's... which if a body's dumped, is going to be very much under the, uh, um, process of decomposition, you know, especially if it's in water. But it's sort of so standard. It, it, standard when a body's found is for public appeal. Yeah, you know, so they, they just didn't bother doing it, um, which, which goes against protocol anyway. Um, so, in 2012, Strathclyde Police finally reclassified the case from missing person to murder. Now, when, when I first started doing these with you, yeah. I, I, I said about in my experiences all these kids that we were dealing with that were, were being pimped out that were so-called child prostitutes. Yeah. They were all mispersons. They were all classed as missing persons. So th- these missing persons in the police, they were, they were just appallingly staffed. Yeah. There was a lot of inexperience. And not, there were some good ones, but they never, ever debriefed the children. They never looked at any serious criminality other than kids running away from a home. Okay. But as, as we've proven, that missing persons is a key to all of this. And this is how I uh, built the foundations for, for a solid um, prosecution against someone for pimping out kids. And it was all through missing person information, all of it. Uh, so, you know, the police, they do this all the time. They do it with the missing persons. They don't take it serious. And they do it with the child abuse investigations. They just don't take it seriously. And I don't think, you know, that's by by mistake. I think they know exactly what they're doing. Because yeah. the moment that they um, start seriously looking into these uh, these units and, and the clientele they get and the people in their books, they're, they're going to come up against very organised uh, child trafficking. And, and I've proven that. Um, so in 1997, we've got this guy, James Gallagher, he gets jailed for child. And it turns out that he, back in the day, w- was a work colleague of of Alex and uh also that he procured his own sister to be raped by um Alex. So uh James Gallagher is is then sent to prison and what happens is he's sold up with a guy called Alexandra Keel. And Alexandra Keel spends many uh nights with with, with Gallagher and Gallagher then admits to him 
and this is it. See, this is where we're going places now. Okay, okay, yeah. So Gallagher admits that he was involved in a pinball ring in 1950s, late 1950s, with Alex Gartshaw, Gartshaw, sorry, Gartshaw, that's his name, police officers, judges, again, does that not smack highly of the stuff that I dealt with in the yes, West End? 100%. And, and the other cases, they were in a pedo group called the Untouchables. Wow. And he said that they were, they got hold of this girl, Moira Anderson, right? And that she was raped by them all. And what they did was they left her in the bus, right? Dumped the bus and left her for the night, went off drinking and come back and Moira had died of exposure. And then they had to dump her body. Right. So, so again, it's not a lone individual chance thing, you know, um, spontaneous. Yeah. This is yeah. organized. Like, like we see with Leslie Mulseed running errors. They knew that, that little Moira would run errors to the shop and this guy was there, was waiting. Um, and it turned out that Moira had, had got on a bus, but only because the, the local shop had run out of, um, butter. So she was going to go into the main town to a bigger co-op get some butter so her mum can make a cake. I mean, how sweet is that? Yeah. Of course, yeah. this guy's driving the bus, bang, it's on, right? But not only that, uh, James Gallagher then goes on to say that it wasn't just police officers and everything else. Another person that was in his group was an Englishman called Fred West. Oh, jeez. And, and, a man called Thomas Hamilton. Thomas Hamilton was a dumb blame murderer. Oh my God. So we can now link. Wow. Everyone Dude. together. Dude, how, how, listen, we're not going to find like a long, like trail of journalists who've uncovered this and are now all dead because why, well, why, well, why, why? Why are we the ones putting this together? I don't. This is this is just getting well, too. Well, well, get this. So, so they tried to discredit the kill because he he put a twenty six page statement together, and he gave it to the press and he said, "Look, I'm going to want money for this, and rightly so. You put this effort in, and it's a big story." He asked for twenty thousand. They then explained to him that look, it's to do with criminality. So he turned around and said, "Look, you can have it for nothing. Just get this guy. Get this guy." It went to the police. It was then hidden away and covered up. Never, ever to see the light again. Now, we can link Thomas Hamilton in with Gordon Brown. They knew each other. Gordon Brown was oh. best friends with who? Jerry McCann's brother. Yeah. Um, when, we, when we look at um, the Leslie Mulseed thing, we see our suspect w was in the same town as the... Um, Raymond Hewitt ended up in the same town as the McCanns in Portugal at the same time. Um, we've got um, our our main guy here, Alex Scarthorpe, going to Leeds. At that time, Leeds, we had Savile was very active and so was the Yorkshire Ripper. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, we got links to Fred West, and I mentioned this before I even looked into this. I said Fred West was in Coatbridge, and there was a case in Coatbridge. I bet he was involved. He was. It was involved at the same time, a pedo gang, a pedo group. And it was proven that West was involved in organized pedophilia. The characters are all the same. They're wife beaters. They beat their children. They got high sex drives, loads and loads of deviant behavior. They're connected to Masonic connections. They're connected to police officers, sex parties, total perversion. The pattern's all the same. These people all know each other. It's... And then, of course, the last one, we had Raymond Hewlett, the fairground worker, which links yep. into our other guy, the fairground worker, which links into Sidney Cook, the fairground worker. Um, look, I, when I thought that we would never get another, like you mentioned, eureka moment, like Leslie Molseed, Moira Anderson has just delivered the goods. Just delivered the goods. Jesus. It's... It's more and more shocking just how in our face all of this is because, you know, we've not, we're, you know, we've not got, you know, a, a, a huge budget and a massive team and we're, you know, we're throwing all this, yeah. these resources into this. This is like scarily being pasted together as we're going. 
And, and, and this is an open source investigation, open source investigation. Yeah. And, and, and again, after um, you put the video out with Leslie Moseed, Leslie Moseed's um, neighbor uh, sent a message to me. She remembers Stefan Kishko. She remembers Leslie. Yeah. And then I've got um, the, the bloke, Ronald Gastry, his co-defendant. Um, I've got a victim of that pedo group. She contacts me. She contacts me. She said, John, it's the same case, Leslie Mosey and yeah. what they did to me. Um, she went on to, I can't name her because um, it's an ongoing case, but she went on to uh, uh, Channel 4 actually did do um, a panorama. One of them actually did do a, a, a documentary on what she went through. But it, that was organized sexual and, and satanic abuse. Yeah. So, these people are procurers of children, they're abductors of children, they're rapists, they're perverts, and they're murderers. Yeah. There's no other way of putting it. But the, the, no. the, the, that isn't even the point we're trying to make. The point is how they all interlink and how there is this undeniable connection web and secret plot against children that is happening call it uh, masonic call it satanic call it whatever you want i don't care what anybody wants to argue over in fact if any of you want to just argue over the semantics over yeah, oh i don't I think agree. it's this who gives a fuck yeah, yeah Let's, the same, see, isn't it? see once i tell you what see once we blow the lid off this right then we'll all have loads of live sessions. You can even come on yourself. You can argue the points when we can sit back and know this is not all public knowledge and the facts have been laid bare because arguing amongst ourselves is actually one of the, the, the counterintelligence tools used by these child yeah, predators. Well, um, well, well, that, that's what they call it. It's like the, the devil causes division. Yeah. Division. And, and, and this is what, like you say, uh, arguing over s uh, seminars in semantics causes division. Well, look, you know, let's not look at the speck of dust in our eye, but the logs in theirs. Yeah. You know, th there clearly is a, a pattern. These people are connected, and th this this is we've gone taking this through from the fifties through to the sixties, through to the seventies to the eighties, and, and and through to the nineties. We've done that with every single case that we've done. Okay, yeah, and I, I'm. The, I, I, when I, I really thought Detro would be it, and then Leslie Mosey w was even bigger. And this thing has just polished it. It's, it's just fine tuned it and polished it. And yeah. uh, Moira Anderson, well, God bless you. Uh, you. You've delivered, absolutely delivered. Yeah, it's really just horrific, all of it. Yeah, and yeah, you know, it sounds. Like I'm, I'm, I'm being passive when I say that because it, it is easy because it, it's obvious that it's horrific, but it's so difficult to keep people focused because I've, all, I've often described this topic as the conversational version of putting your hand over a naked flame. Your brain pulls you away from it as quickly as possible to protect you from it. And that's a natural reaction. But the sad fact is people, we are on the cusp of a world where they have they're trying to pin accusations on tim ballard and the producer of um that movie that came out i can't remember the name of it well, sound, sound of freedom sound of freedom they, they will try and pin this on everyone the tactics that are used by these people are the same the, the tactics used and the, the crimes they pin on people are the crimes that they're doing themselves and i i just anyone who's on the fence promise me that when we announce that we've got all the visuals ready and we're going to present the data you come into this with a mind that is willing to accept what you're seeing because i wish i was capable of going ah shut the fuck up john there's no way this is real i'm going to go and play some fucking call of duty and you know not think about this but we're at a stage now where the the, the viral power of the internet the viral power of social media voices we can push this out in a way that possibly has never been done before against these individuals because I believe this information has ever been laid out in this way before. And if we can make this work, we could effectively probably end up, you know, being pushed off of bridges, but at the same time making some change. Yeah. You know, yeah, this is, um, I, I, I'm, I'm just totally blown away with this. I've, um, I've, I'm saying enjoyment isn't, isn't the, um, the word because we're dealing with misery but uh enjoyable in as much as we've exposed um organized 
yeah, you know, yeah, paedophile child murdering networks, it's, which, it's, which is it's difficult. going right the way across the country and across decades. Yeah, it's it's difficult. The only way I can sum it up for people is it's like got you, you bastard. That's 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 the enjoyment because it's it's not a fun topic, but getting the evidence, creating um visuals and, and actually doing the research and getting solid public information that links together is what has to happen. And I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna hear a lot of uh, people you know outward spoken saying that it's this and saying that it's that but that's the beauty of uh, a world where people can can say their opinion a lot of these children their opinions matter nothing to those who have encaptured and enslaved and abused but, but, but also how the police what what they've done i mean yeah. we see the same arrogance and cover-ups that constantly in every single case you know where they, their reluctance to to look facts in the face and deal with yeah, it that's true it's incredible, incredible. Look at this guy. He's still stating that that this special needs guy is a suspect. Yeah. Still stating it, you know. And it, we see the same. We keep seeing the same pattern, and it gets accepted. Right, nothing to see. Let's move on. Yeah. And it's only the tenacity of individuals who have a feeling or have a heart for it and know him, whatever it is, that this isn't right. And and God bless this D.I. Jim McEwen, because we need people like him. There's a yeah. lot of anti-police, uh, and I get a lot of anti-police sort of um, rhetoric my way, but no, 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 we need them. But we need these good guys, and, and these, these other ones, um, they need to go. 100%. And it's, so uh, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I've, the last few weeks have, uh, I've come alive. I've, I've really, really sort of um, taken to this. Do you know what? It's funny and, because I, I you can hear... You, you, do you know what it's like? You know, and I, I'm, this is, I apologies about the analogy, John, right? But you know if you're ever out walking a dog, right, and it gets a fucking smell and it's off? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what your brain is. You are yeah. a golden retriever, right, who has got the scent in an open field barreling yeah. towards what he's searching for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's 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 exciting because I'm just fucking I'm do you know what I am? I'm the I'm like the tiny cat that's dug its claws into your side and is getting dragged along for the ride, bro. That's yeah. that's that's where I sit in this. But it's fascinating and it's shocking and it's it's horrific. And sadly it doesn't get any better in the coming weeks as we start to prove our theory and present the 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 evidence for all of this. And thank you everybody for kind of being here with us because you guys, we need you guys moving forward because 10, you know, 100 minds are better than one. Everybody likes to do a little bit of sleuthing. And I think a, a working format is when we start presenting this information, we're going to leave you guys with ways of fact checking this. I think that's important. We want you to be able to turn around and go, well, why should we take your fucking word for it? And I think that's important. So presenting evidence that you can also check up on our evidence is vital because why leave any stone unturned, John? Well, well, that, like what we say in the police, checkable facts, provable lies. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, these cases, if they had to go before a court, we've we got to expect this. So do your homework, do your checking out. Yeah. And, and what, what's left is the truth. And, uh, but how these people have all come together is is fascinating. But it's it's really amazing how it's always portrayed by the media and by the police. They're both together. That it's just this lone pervert. Yeah, that's you it. You know, and picking them up, and that's it. It's, no, 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 it's not. There's more to this. There's more to this, and uh, and this this is what I think we proved. We proved this. So um, Brian Fields was a guy I keep thinking of. And I'm telling you now, Brian Fields is going to be linked to Sidney Cook. He's going to be linked to Ronald Gastry. Ramey Hewlett's going to be linked to Brian Fields, to, to Sidney Cook as well. Yeah. Um, and then this this guy, Alex, Alex Gassor, I thought, um, they're all going to be linked and Sable will be in there. They're, 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 they're all, all be in the mix, all be in the mix together. Yeah, I agree. Well, no. another mad case, John, another evening where it, it just leaves me feeling angry and frustrated again. And I, I'm not saying that we're, you know, we've got much clout, but it falls on two YouTubers or two content creators to un, un, unmask all of this. And 
you know, while politicians are running around trying to write letters and demonetize people uh, for accusations without evidence, we have countless times presented evidence that we have gathered ourselves through sting operations to YouTube to demonetize and remove predators from the platform with no result. It's almost instantaneous when somebody with a voice needs taken down that they're removed, and it raises question as to why the safety of children isn't paramount to the same level. Well, it may be that um, Russell Brand, with all his trouser activity, um, maybe he hasn't uh, gone to, uh, below the age of consent, but maybe he knows many that have, and that might be the reason that he's a problem. Do you know, it also might be the reason why he was so open about his, his, his misconduct with women and how promiscuous he was to make damn sure everyone knew that yeah. it was all about women and not children. It was almost yeah. when you when you say when I say that out loud now, and if we if we all just agree for a second that the conspiracy is true and there is a big secret government and all the rest of it, it would be quite an interesting tactic to make yourself so overly sexualized that nobody could possibly question whether it was children or not because twenty four seven you're with an adult woman. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, of course. Interesting. Of course. Well, John, again, thank you. You're you're just yeah. amazing, and John and I are going to be meeting ahead of time uh, moving forward because we've got a lot of planning and a lot of things that we want to present to you. Hopefully, we ruin everyone's Christmas. That's probably uh, what we're aiming for. <laughs> if I'm being honest yeah. with you, um, a lot of this and, will be... and a few and a few sleepless nights. You know, yeah. A I mean, nights. a lot of brain working. A, a lot's going to be out before Christmas. Obviously, I'm just saying. By the time we get to Christmas, I'm sure we'll all be sickened and it's interesting because i think once we pre present this information john we should open up through my website ways for people to contact yourself and myself who, yeah. who maybe have something that they want to say and we'll tell all stories uh and yeah 100 percent. yeah and, and if we can provide evidence that can go back before the cps and the procurator fiscal that can get these cases reopened well let's do it Oh, 100%. And if there's ones that don't have evidence and it's presented in the same way as the brand case, I will sadly be changing people's names, obviously, because I would, I'm going to present it the way that it has to be presented. And if it's just a case of someone's testimony, I'm probably going to make sure that when names are changed, they're changed to the same name in every single video we do. Just in case there's confusion. If Bob's called Bob, he might be called Bobby in the uh, the one where we have to yeah. keep people's names out of things. Yeah, you know? that's it. Well, it's what we used to do in the place, pseudonyms. Yeah, pseudonyms. Well, don't get me wrong. There'll be, there'll be cases where everyone's dead now that we can talk a lot about. But yeah. when it comes to... When it comes to when it comes to such a story coming in, and then you go and oh this this sounds this there's a, there's a lot of things in this that maybe they wouldn't have known unless they were part of this, and you go away and do your you put your wee freaking police feelers out when you're talking to them you'll know within ten minutes if they're full of shite or they're or they're 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 truthful bro do you know what I'm saying like hundred percent hundred percent so let's let's wrap it up this evening guys and uh we'll see you next week thank you so so much also leave a comment down below if you would like us to do a live show uh, where you can all kind of ask questions on this um it will probably be it will probably replace a filming session so it'll either be a wednesday or a friday when john is available to do stuff and it will probably be done without cameras from john's end it'll probably just be voice but if you'd like that leave a comment and we'll get that organized if uh, john you're up for that yeah, I am. I mean, only only relevant questions. I won't be uh, anything that I deem troll worthy. Uh, I no, no. Nah, listen, them. listen, so, bro. Uh, when we do lives, we don't even contain. What, as I like to say, fuck the noise. Okay, we're not. Yeah. It's not about that. I mean, a lot of people believe in freedom of speech when it comes to YouTube side chats. I'm very <laughs> much. I'm very much. I'm very much China's approach. This is fucking our corner of the internet and if you don't fucking abide by the rules you don't fucking get in your freedom of speech a hundred percent your freedom of speech is important but not as important as my guests uh, enjoying their uh, their time on the panel so conduct yourself appropriately and if you've got anything you want to say to anybody feel free to uh, email us basically keep it out the side chat because that will just get you ban hammered well listen Oh, also, that doesn't apply to opinions, okay? So if you think I'm a dickhead, you're very welcome to call me a dickhead without me banning you. But if you want to, you know, spout lies, conspiracy theories, or slanderous comments, banned. Fair, John? Yeah. Fair, fair opinion? 
Yeah, exactly. That's fair. So you can call you can call John a wanker, right? But you can't say <laughs> you can't say John wanks, but you can call him a wanker. All right, <laughs> that's the difference. All right. So uh, listen, we'll, we'll yeah. see. We'll see you all next week. Thank you very much, John. For me as always. Oh, like and subscribe. For me as always, Ron Swanson. Be safe out there, guys. <laughs> <laughs>